Hi, this is the voice of Heidi Calero with another economic capsule on the Puerto Rico economy. Don't forget those of you who want to receive notifications regarding new analysis or economic news on Puerto Rico to look for us and to subscribe in the voice of Heidi Calero in YouTube. Today we are going to talk about a topic which is still hot in Puerto Rico besides the COVID-19. It's uh, Law 154. Law 154 was um, adopted or legislated in Puerto Rico sometime in uh, 2000, fiscal 2010, but really started enacting uh, and um, uh, being collect collecting some of these revenues back in fiscal 2011, but mostly it was 2012. Law 154 established a 4% initially on the exports of these foreign companies and for purpose, for tax purposes, U.S. multinational companies are foreign companies. And so they would receive, even though they pay the 4% on Law 154 to the general fund, the government of Puerto Rico, they would also receive a credit against their taxes with IRS. And IRS did not file any protest. Uh, this was an opinion of a law firm in, in, in the U.S. that Puerto Rico uh, really paid for this opinion. And so, more or less, um, U.S. Treasury went along. Uh, this was what I like to call another bailout for Puerto Rico because it is with a general fund that the government of Puerto Rico pays its operational expenses. It pays now, currently, its pensions and the other essential services that are in, important for the people of Puerto Rico. Well, in 2012, uh, this um, uh, Law 154 was initially starting to reduce its 4% uh, to 3.75% and eventually to be eliminated with a sunset of about four years. Well, come four years or before that, when the next governor came into place, that's uh, Governor Alejandro Garcia Padilla, in January of 2013, they realized that the finances of the government of Puerto Rico were in real disarray. So they said, hey, we have to make permanent Law 154 or at least extend its, um, its sunset to maybe 2021 or even 2026. And so they said, let's fix it. Let's not continue decline. They are reducing the tax from uh, 4% to 375 to 275. No, let's make it a fixed 4%. And for the pharmaceutical companies, it was transparent to them whether they paid the 4% to uh, yeah, Puerto Rico Treasury, the Puerto Rico government, or to IRS. The important thing was that they were not going to pay twice. They were going to pay only once and it would be credited by IRS. So everything was hunky-dory, but uh, then in 2016, Governor Garcia Padilla said, hey, we cannot pay uh, the public debt in Puerto Rico sometime in fiscal 2017. That was October of 2016. So that's our fiscal year 2017. And so all hell broke loose by uh, 2016 uh, or rather um, June uh, of June 30th of 2016. Then um, President Obama uh, with uh, Congress, they legislated PROMESA law, which allowed Puerto Rico the protection, quote, of bankruptcy under Title III. And one of its main purposes was to really renegotiate its public debt and to allow Puerto Rico to grow its economy and uh, to undertake the necessary economic reforms. Well, nothing of that has taken place. And notice how much the law 154, which now the U.S. Treasury has indicated to the governor of Puerto Rico that, uh, hey, give me the plan because we are going to eliminate this credit for IRS. Well, from 2012, it was like 1.8 billion, and that represented 22% of the general fund revenues. Notice in 2020, the fiscal year which just ended, uh, it represented almost the same, $1.8 billion. So, over this period, almost close to $19 billion have been paid to the government of Puerto Rico, and they represent 20% of general fund revenues. Where do these um, collections come from? Well, from the sector of manufacturing. As of 2019, the gross domestic product 
manufacturing represented 47% of all this big pie. And most of that manufacturing is open. That is, it exports. And just to show you that, most of these low 154 is paid by maybe 20 companies in Puerto Rico, and of those, maybe 10 of those are pharmaceuticals, accounting for 80% of the payment of that low 154. Notice the increase that they have undertaken since 2012, $40.2 billion in exports. That's 70% of all exports in Puerto Rico. And notice that it's almost 80% as out of fiscal 2020 with $48 billion in pharmaceuticals. A great opportunity for Puerto Rico now with COVID-19 that the President of the United States has said, hey, we must bring manufacturing back to U.S. soil because especially in pharmaceuticals, we cannot rely on China for some of the sources, maybe the uh, supply chain. So Puerto Rico has a great opportunity. It's a great center of pharmaceuticals, but we must really take, get our act together and lobby aggressively so that Puerto Rico can have that advantage of manufacturing. Notwithstanding, Law 154 has been told that it's, it should be eliminated. So we need to replace it uh, with an alternative. And we have been given years to do that and it's just the same um, uh, order of procedure in Puerto Rico, the same M MO, uh, module, op module operandi. Let's uh, wait and wait and wait. Well, you know, things uh, come to a head and we really must uh, take a look at Law 154 and how we are going to replace those $2 billion that we need to pay the pensions and to pay for essential services and to start paying the public debt. Re we negotiated debt aggressively and start paying it because Puerto Rico must do that. Uh, the pharmaceuticals or represent uh, almost 16,000 well-paid jobs or 22% of manufacturing jobs. So it's an important sector that Puerto Rico cannot afford to lose. So even though Law 154 has been a bailout, we need to address it. And now we need to replace that source and come to an agreement with these manufacturing companies so that they start paying maybe more in terms of income tax and as foreign companies, they can go to IRS and say, we paid Puerto Rico so much in income tax, let's get the credit, even if it's 80% of uh, what they paid to Puerto Rico against IRS. And that was the, um, the law, the, uh, the tax reform law that President Trump approved back in December of 2017. So there are options, but Puerto Rico needs action. That's exactly where we have a, a deficit. So until the next capsule, please stay safe and don't forget to follow us in YouTube under the voice of Heidi Calero. Thank you.